OK, so we're going to solve this chain of inequalities here. And just to make it really clear what we need to do, we're essentially looking for all of the x values which simultaneously satisfy all four of these inequalities. So if we start to label them, we can call our first inequality a, where we need x to the 4 minus 4 to be less than x cubed minus 3. And similarly, we can label our next inequality as b, where we need x cubed minus 3 has to be less than x squared minus 2, and so on. Then we'll essentially look for all of the x values which satisfy each of these inequalities simultaneously. So we can think of this as the set of x values which satisfy a. Then we need to take the intersection of this set with the set of x values which satisfy b, and then the set of x values which satisfy c, and those which satisfy d. So if we take the intersection of all of these, then we actually automatically get that x to the 4 minus 4, because it's less than x cubed minus 3, which is less than x squared minus 2, we automatically get that x to the 4 minus 4 is less than x squared minus 2, and similarly for all of our other pairings there. So we just need to find the intersection then of all of the x values which satisfy each of these four inequalities. We'll go through these in reverse order. So it starts with the simplest one here, d just rearranges and gives us that x is less than 1. And there's no more information available from d there. But we've made a start, so whatever our x values are for a, b and c, we know that x has to be less than 1 in order to satisfy d. Then if we move on to c, we can rearrange this into a quadratic inequality. So take away x and add 1 on both sides, we'll get x squared minus x minus 1 is less than 0. So now we could look at this graphically as a quadratic, and this is going to have two roots, which we can find in a moment. And we're essentially looking for where is this quadratic less than 0. So it's going to be x between these two roots. So solving this perhaps with the quadratic formula, if you like, we find that our two roots are a half plus root 5 over 2, or the golden ratio, and our second root is a half minus root 5 over 2. So these are our two roots, so then we're saying that x has got to be between these two roots in order for the quadratic function to be less than 0. So then we get a half minus root 5 over 2 is less than x, and x has got to be less than a half plus root 5 over 2. So this is the bigger root and this is the smaller root. But we actually know that a half plus root 5 over 2 is bigger than 1. So we need, not only is this inequality satisfied, we also need x to be less than 1. So here on our picture, 1 might go around here. So we're actually only interested in the values of x between 1 and a half minus root 5 over 2. So when we combine c and d then, we get that a half minus root 5 over 2 is less than x, and x has got to be less than 1. Is all the information available from c and d. So now we'll have a look at combining the inequality b into this picture. Now with inequality b, we'll start by rearranging. So we'll subtract x squared from both sides, and we'll add 3 to both sides of our inequality. We get x cubed minus x squared is now less than 1, where we've subtracted the x squared and added the 3. And now we can factorise this left-hand side. We get x squared into x minus 1 is less than 1. And the next thing we'll do is actually divide by this x minus 1. You'll notice here that x minus 1 has always got to be less than 0. So if x minus 1 is negative, then when we divide by this, it's going to flip the sign of our inequality. So we get x squared is now greater than 1 over x minus 1. But at this point, we notice that x minus 1 is negative, so 1 over x minus 1 is also negative. So at this point, we can say then that because inequality d is satisfied, x minus 1 is negative, so 1 over x minus 1 is negative, and we know that x squared, just any real number squared, is always going to be greater than or equal to 0. So actually, this inequality is always satisfied whenever x minus 1 is negative. So, so long as d is satisfied, this means that inequality b will also have to be satisfied. So we can say that x cubed minus 3 is less than x squared minus 2 is always true when x minus 1 is negative. Or we can think of this as d actually implies inequality b. So if we want to include b into our picture, we don't actually need to change any of our values of x. This is still going to be true for all of these values of x, because all we really need is that x is less than 1. 
So for B, C and D to be valid, we just keep the same values of X as we had before for C and D. And now we just need to consider inequality A. So here it actually makes sense to consider the cases where X is positive and X is negative separately, just to make the algebra a bit simpler for us. So at the moment we've got that X is between a half minus root 5 over 2 and 1. So on a number line, this looks like this, that we're between 1 and a half minus root 5 over 2 is around negative 0 0.618. So if we first consider the case where x is between 0 and 1, so greater than or equal to 0, but we need to be strictly less than 1, we want to show that x to the 4 minus 4 is less than x cubed minus 3 in order for a to be satisfied. So a is true. If we add 4 to both sides of this, a is going to be true if and only if x to the 4 is strictly less than x cubed plus 1. And at this point we can actually notice that because x is between 0 and 1, so we've got x is greater than or equal to 0 less than 1, this implies that x to the 4 is also going to be between 0 and 1. Because if you take a number between 0 and 1, raise it to the power of 4, you'll still get something between 0 and 1. And this is really useful now because we want x to the 4 to be less than x cubed plus 1. We've just shown that it's less than 1. And also just the fact that x cubed is going to be positive, because x is positive or non-negative here. So x cubed is greater than or equal to 0. So this implies then that we know that x to the 4 is less than 1. And this is then going to be less than or equal to x cubed plus 1. So if we add something positive, this is still going to be satisfied. So actually for any values of x between 0 and 1, we automatically get that x to the 4 is less than x cubed plus 1, which is what we were looking for. So actually whenever x is between 0 and 1, a is going to be satisfied, so we don't get any further restrictions in this particular part of the interval. Now finally we just need to consider inequality a for these values of x that are negative, so between 0 and a half minus root 5 over 2. So we'll start with our inequality a and rearrange slightly differently now. We say that a holds if and only if if we add 4 and subtract x cubed on both sides, we get x to the 4 minus x cubed has to be less than 1, which factorises as x cubed into x minus 1 is less than 1. And here, again, we're only interested in x minus 1 being negative. So for all of our x values we're interested in, x minus 1 is negative, which once again flips our inequality sign when we divide by x minus 1. So we now want a is true if and only if x cubed is greater than 1 over x minus 1. And at this point we'll just put this to one side and we're actually going to return to inequality c and we'll get a very similar looking inequality with a 1 over x minus 1 which we'll be able to use. So we'll see that c holds if and only if if we subtract x and add 2 on both sides if and only if x squared minus x is less than 1 which factorises x times x minus 1 is less than 1. And once again, dividing by x minus 1, which is negative for all of our values of x we're interested in, we see that this all holds, inequality c holds, if and only if x is greater than 1 over x minus 1. And at this point, we can now compare our x cubed and x values, because we know we're in a very specific range of values for x, we're between 0 and minus 0 0.6 approximately. So if we were to draw a graph of, first of all, y equals x cubed, a cubic will look like this. And if we compare this with a graph of y equals x, you'll see that y equals x, x is actually going to be less than x cubed when we're between 0 and negative 1 here. So what we're saying is that x cubed is greater than x when we're in this particular region here, actually whenever we're between negative 1 and 0. So we've got that x cubed is greater than x, so we've got x cubed is greater than x, and because b, c and d are already satisfied for these values of x in this region, we know that c must be satisfied, so we know that x must be greater than 1 over x minus 1. So we've shown then that x cubed is greater than 1 over x minus 1, which is exactly what we're trying to show that a holds for these negative values. So then we can conclude then that a is also satisfied and doesn't impose any further restrictions on us here when x is negative. 
So when x was positive, we saw that a was satisfied, and when x is negative, we see that a is also satisfied, so we don't get any further restrictions for our inequality a. So our overall solution to the problem, so that all four inequalities are satisfied then, is just what we had earlier, that x has got to be between a half minus root 5 over 2 and 1.